be an author, but I haven't seen that I've got many more talents. I thought, why not? I mean, I can be doing dancing, I can be a medium, I can be doing anything is possible. If you want something, you can make it happen. Uh, you need to have the knowledge how to do it and, and make that way a better version of yourself. Hello, thanks very much for coming in. Um, if we could just start maybe to introduce yourself and then sort of tell us a bit about what you've been doing. Because uh, I know a lot of people know you from the book From Your Heart, but as well as like, you've been in a few TV shows and movies and that kind of thing as well, right? Yes, that's correct. I mean, uh, my name is Paolo De Banani. I actually was born in, in Italy and I spent now 26 years in the UK. Uh, much of part is in York. I used to live in Glasgow and Worcester. Uh, but York is my favourite city. From there, then I went to go to dance in 2012, and then finally I managed to get to British Got Talent. That's my favourite show, also because I like Anton Deck and, uh, and I like the judges. And in 2016, and, uh, and I met also Stephen Mahon as well. Uh, but um, during that time, also as well, I've been also in movies as well. So it's been a very interesting life and. And while I was doing that as well, I was also writing as well um, because I like creating stories. Uh, I mean, at, at first it was difficult for me because I come from a different country. But when we spent so many years in the, in the UK, uh, it became easier. The more you write, the more you get better and the more your English you get better. So uh, it's pushing myself to different boundary. So I want to make sure that my writing is uh, growing with statue, little bit by little, I'm just getting better and better. Um, so, but I, I, yes, I did write an Italian poems and then I started writing English poems uh, when I came in 1997. Um, but then I discovered um, writing prose um, through um, Hemingway and then I thought I could do something like that. I bought books teach me how to write in a short story and from there I just found the, my own style and, and I liked creating characters and, and then I tried to bring them alive. You mentioned Hemingway a second ago. Yes. When you came to writing your work, was he one of your main influences or were there other books, films, TV shows, these kind of things that kind of like influenced the kind of stories you wanted to tell? And like I said, I'm not a GQ and I'm not Hemingway. So I, I'm, I can never compare yourself with other authors, but you can do your own style. And so you can see from my story, you don't know what's going on. You need to kind of read it from the beginning to the end. I give you, I, what I notice a lot of authors, giving too much information. And at the end, you, you, you know what's going on. I tend to give a little information. You just have to kind of read the new book. It's like a, a jigsaw, it's like a puzzle. You don't know what's going on until the end and I'm trying to be a better version, better version when I'm writing, I'm trying to make it better, so that way I can develop more my skills and uh, in fact in future books I'm, I'm writing at the moment, I'm implementing like onomatopoeia, so there's words that can create sounds, I'm trying to make the story even more alive. Um, if you're talking about Tramming Heart, for example, you have like a sci-fi detective paranormal, Whereas the, the latest book I'm writing at the moment is uh, writing comedy and I've never done comedy before. So it's much more difficult because the comedy has to be shorter, you have to be snappy, you have to be telling the jokes much uh, quicker and so you have to write more work. Whereas that you, if you write a fictional, you could write like 10 pages, it's okay. But if you write a comedy, you can't write 10 pages to tell a joke. <laughs> Nobody will laugh at the end. <laughs> so, and have you found it difficult to in between? Because I understand you've also written a book about managing finance and you've got a copy of it here, haven't we? And I would guess that's quite a different genre to write a mystery and it's very different to write a comedy. So do you find it easy to switch between the different styles of writing? Um, but most of my life I've been a cartoon and accountant. I studied accountancy when I was in Italy. And when I came into this country, I've done most of my life has been accountancy. So because it's close to my house to write in finance, uh, because I've been through that experience where I was struggling financially and went through a divorce, I lost everything and I was so close to being homeless um, so I want to make sure I give something back to the community 
The problem what I found is a lot of time people like more fictional than non-fictional and are struggling to even do there is um, a way to, for, for people to show how to do manage better your finance in seven steps. Um, but unfortunately a lot of people they don't um, they don't really they're not really interested. So they're more interested more fictional. So that's why I'm spending more time on writing fictional than non-fictional. But I still want to help in other people if I can, uh, because I, I've been through the same experience. So if maybe the people who are watching doing this cost of living crisis want a piece of advice for better managing their finances, in maybe a sense, what would your advice be? Well, my advice is, uh, if you buy one of my book, buy that Master Your Finance, what I can give you, I give you 30 to an hour of my time, uh, free of charge, and then what I do is I look into your findings, and then what I can do, we're working together to be better. Because, you know, like you say, you know, we at the moment are facing a financial crisis. Cost of living is so high, and also as well, um, inflation as well. So why don't we help each other? You know, you don't have to struggle by yourself when you got someone who can really help you because I've been through what you've been facing at the moment. So I can help you. You mentioned previously the big reason why you wanted to share financial tips with people was because you'd had some maybe difficulty in your life. I was wondering if you'd be able to share a little bit about that with us. Yeah, that, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you see, you need to understand, I, when I moved to Glasgow, I actually met um, my ex-wife. You know, to respect that we should never give up with that because um, it didn't work out very well. And in the, in the past it's sad and funny because we only been spent together for two years. But it took me about three and a half years to get divorced. Um, that resulted in I've lost everything and I'm still recovering from the divorce because we left me with a lot of debts. Lucky for me when COVID-19 came, I had to start to have a look and I said, I can't carry on doing what I'm doing because it would have taken me too long to pay it off for my debt. So I started to implement it, master your finance in my life, and since then I just get a little bit better every single day. What I've realized is no matter how your situation is bad, that's it, your past. You cannot change, but you can change your present, you can change your future. You're not alone, um, so you can definitely turn your life around. But it all start with your mind. So it was probably part of the first book that you had published, or in, in the English language, sorry? It was the first version, because basically you need to understand, my book was calling, uh, the first one was um, The Twelve Wonders. Then it changed to Ticking Heart, so Turning Heart with a Ticking Clock, and then Turning Heart. Basically, these two previous versions, is the same book, a little bit of some update, but the first, the first version, unfortunately, my publisher cut off on my royalty. The second publisher, it was just a printing company, so it didn't look after me. So, with the, with the third version, that is definitely now I'm not going to change much about the book. Is that's is complete? I got total control of the book, and um, and so that's why uh, we, we we call it that. Is, it's the fun version of the book. Um, but if he, anybody wants to buy my book, definitely go for the last version because if you didn't buy the previous books, I would not receive anything from my publisher. So is it difficult to find a publisher you can trust? Yeah, to be honest, it's been quite difficult because um, sometimes you find editors, they want to say to you, oh, you need to change your dialogue, it's not very good, the story needs to be changed. People say, oh, we can make it better, power. You know what? I leave it, to be honest. I'd rather prefer writing a new story than go re revisit so many times the same story. Because it's like, a, my story is like an, an, your ex-partner. You know, you could have someone, you really have a feeling for that person, but five years down the line, you, you know the same person. You have a feeling for another person. You can't go back to the old girlfriend and say, I want to be with you, but I want to live in love with somebody else. So that's... Uh, yeah. So when you first moved to the UK, did you have a dream in mind that you'd, you'd become a writer or is it something you kind of just fallen into? I always wanted to do since I was 18 years old um, and now I'm making it happen. It's happening now. So I'm really writing books. Now, I guess not many people will 
I would not say 100% people would like my books, but it's okay. If I get 1%, I would be happy. <laughs> do the stories, do they come to you or do you have to sort of sit down and think, today I'm going to write this, this and this, or are you sort of out about doing other things and all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I need to get back to my computer and start writing? I was talking to a medium many years ago and she said to me, I actually go, a spirit, they can't inspire me of writing. So that's why I was able to do a lot. Of, and I still think I'm, even though I'm 50 years old, but I still think I'm a little bit a kid as well. So that way I got a little bit more imagination than other people. And when you've got imagination, then you can do anything really. You're constantly having new ideas for stories though. That's right, yes. Yeah. You always got consistent, you got new ideas. And if you don't, you just have a little bit of break. Um, and then more ideas will come to you anyway. You don't want to overexhaust yourself to thinking about ideas. Sometimes it's better to have your me moments and maybe you go into the park and have um, you know spend time with your friends, with your family, watching TV, just have a relaxing day. Sometimes your ideas will come to you. Um, and if you don't, just read another people's book. Sometimes also, sometimes when you read an, an, another person's book, um, you kind of like get inspired. So there's a different way you can listen to music as well. It's all different ways for you to find ideas. Um, relax yourself, enjoy, go out and enjoy yourself. Um, another way for example I do, uh, if I go out to enjoy myself, um, I, you know, I may get inspired and write another new story. If for anyone who maybe reads your book or saw you dance at some point or something like that, if they could take away one thing from your content, what would you say you'd like that one thing to be? Like if they could learn one thing from from Hart or from managing finances, what one thing would you like to learn? Um, you can be the better version of yourself. And no matter uh, where you are right now, you can change it. And you can turn your dreams into reality. Uh, one of my dreams was um, um, being on Brazil Talent and Atanda. Um, another dream is for publishing books. And I've done that. So anything is possible in life, but you need to put the effort and you need to, and no matter what challenges you're facing, you can overcome them. As long as you are determined and don't let obstacles stopping you for achieving your dreams.